Hi guys, so today we're going to do the evaluating commercial intensive lab. So just a quick introduction, uh, we're going to perform what's known as a back titration and that's where we add an excess reactant in known amount uh, to a reactant of an unknown concentration. So after the, uh, after the reaction is finished, we're going to uh, quantify the excess via a titration. So just a quick term, an antacid is basically a substance that is comprised of weakly basic metal salts that neutralizes stomach acid. So you guys probably heard of tongues, right? Um, the materials you'll need for this lab, you'll need obviously your TC glass or pipette. That's that really weird balloony shaped looking pipette. Um, you do need a 125 mil uh, Erlenmeyer flask, a burette plus a small beaker for washing. Um, you do need your sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid solutions that you standardized last week. And five, you need an eager, eagerness to learn. <laughs> what, what's with the you know, thing at the end? It's a smiley face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the experiment, you will perform it twice, uh, very similar to what you did last week. Um, you will, your antacids will be two types of salts, dissolved and reacted with hydrochloric acid. So um, one type is the carbonate salts. Uh, in this case, we have calcium carbonate, reacts with acid, you get carbonic acid and this carbonic acid will dissociate into liquid water and carbon dioxide. Okay. We also have the hydroxides, hydroxide salts, and um, a typical salt used in antacid is magnesium hydroxide. It reacts with two moles of acid, we get magnesium ion, and again, two moles of liquid water. Okay. And just to add on to the back titration, basically what happens is we're adding more acid than the tablet can neutralize. So at the end, we titrate that excess acid with sodium hydroxide. So generally what's pretty much happening is acid plus base turns into liquid water. Okay. Um, let me just, you guys just move back and I'm going to just demonstrate. You guys probably already noticed from last week's lab, um, all, all sanitary procedures are, are still go. So you're going to, uh, you guys know how to wash your beer right? So mm -hmm. just to demonstrate, I don't have a small beaker on me, but I uh, just thank you for your donation. It's not really small. <laughs> so, <laughs> what you guys want to do is obviously make sure your burette is in the off position. Add about like 10 to 15 mils of water, okay, uh, DI water. Squirt it once, get around like one mil out into the small beaker. Stop, and then you're going to unclamp your beaker, turn it horizontal, and then just like twirl it around as the water's going. Okay? Um, I suggest you do that twice to make sure it's absolutely clean. It doesn't have to be dry, but it does have, it does have to be clean. And as for this, um, you guys should understand how to use this by now. You don't, you squeeze the bowl, you put it just over the top. You don't put the entire bowl over the burette, sorry, pipette. Um, and you should get around like a final aliquot of water and then just kind of like, you know, again, put it horizontal and then let it um, pretty much clean the interior of the pipette. Do this twice, okay? I do understand in your manuals it says you should do the same like kind of washing step with NaOH for your burette and hydrochloric acid with your pipette. Um, when I did the training, we didn't do that, so I will assume that it's not necessary. What is necessary is that you make sure these are very clean. Okay. okay. So from there, uh, could you donate me an early Meyer flask? Thank you. Okay. So by now, you guys should have your standardized NaOH and HCl solutions out. What you're going to do is I'm going to give you guys a uh, pretty much a small bag that has your antacid in it. Um, please record the number, okay? And you have two because we are performing this experiment twice. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure your, uh, your tablet, one, one of these tablets, and uh, write, record the mass down and then come back to your station. And what you're going to do is add 40 mils of distilled water into your 125 mil early minor glass. Again, make sure it's clean, okay? Then you're going to use your TC glass or pipette and pipette 25 mils of the acid stock you had from last week into this solution. So far, so good. Alright, good. And after you measure what, uh, the mass of one tablet, uh, what you can do to kind of speed up the reaction is you can crush one of your tablets, kind of like a fine powder. I do advise you measure uh, the mass again. Okay? And then from there, you're going to add the crushed uh, tablet into your acid water mixture, and you just keep swirling, okay? Your manual says that we're going to boil the solution with a Bunsen burner, we're not doing that, okay? So you're gonna add it to your uh, Erlenmeyer flask, you're gonna swirl for about, uh, I think, two to three minutes until the fizzing stops, okay? So you'll see fizzing, that's the carbon dioxide being produced. Once the fizzing uh, comes to a complete halt, 
go over there and add 10 drops of the indicator, bromothymol blue. Okay, the, the solution should turn kind of yellow. Okay, then we're gonna come back and just this is where it's literally the same as what we did from last week. Yeah, you're gonna have your your red. Okay, and I advise you guys fill it up with your NA, uh, NaOH up to the zero mark. The core would be initial, and you're just gonna do the same thing we did last week. Okay, and there, and then just add. You know, streams up NaOH, you'll see color flashes. Uh, it should be around blue, green, blue. Okay. And once the color, while you're swirling, when the color starts to disappear more slowly, start adding it dropwise. Okay. And then when the color, you know, just stays, titration is done. Okay. Record all data, and then you're gonna wash your Erlenmeyer flask. Okay. Again, it does not have to be dry. Just make sure it's very clean. And then now you're gonna do a second trial. Okay. Measure it out, crush it, measure it again. 40 mils of DI water, 25 mils of acid. Boom. Okay, you should not have to refill the NaOH. If you filled it up all the way up here, that should be more than enough to perform both trials. So far, so good. Okay, okay so from there, um, you guys should have all the data necessary to pretty much do this analysis column. And first you need to find out the number of moles of hydrochloric acid that you've added. So remember, we're doing 25 mils, so that's 0 0.025 liters times the concentration of HCl that you got from last week. Then you're going to find the number of moles of uh, sodium hydroxide added or reacted, and that's pretty much your B initial minus your B final uh, times the concentration of sodium hydroxide again from last week, and that'll give you the number of moles of NaOH uh, reacted. And then we're going to find the number of moles of HCl neutralized, and that's where you take pretty much this is A, this is B in your manual. You're going to do A minus B, okay? And remember, you are doing these trials twice, so save the first value you get. When you do your second trial, save the second value, average them out, okay? So you're pretty much gonna add two different values for the amount of moles of HCl neutralized, okay? So once you get that average, now you're gonna find the mass efficiency, okay? That's gonna be uh, your average value here, divided by the mass of the tau, okay? Then now you're gonna do cost efficiency, which is, again, uh, the average moles of HCl neutralized over the cost of the tablet. And based on the number on your tablet, there is a chart over there that gives you the cost of uh, your tablet. Okay. And just another thing I want to clarify is, if you see something like this where it's you know, $0.50, that means $0.50. Cents, okay.